I thank you for your son, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your son, Jesus, that gives us life and gives us hope. And Lord, is, is our everything that we have this morning. We can speak the name of Jesus. We can speak the name of Jesus for all our needs that we have in life, dear God. And I praise your name this morning for you are worthy. You are worthy and you are holy. And Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For being faithful. For loving us and caring about us. Lord, we praise your name this morning for you are worthy and you are holy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's quiet our hearts before God here this morning and just see what he is saying to each individual that's here. What is he saying in your life? What is he saying for you? And I want to speak to, I want to speak to someone out here this morning. Do not get weary in well-doing. God is with you. God is with you. If you feel lonely, if you feel depressed, if there's anxiety that tries to come on you, I pray this morning in Jesus' name that that be gone. I pray that it be cut off, that it no longer has a hold on your life in Jesus' name, but you are set free by the blood of the Lamb. You are set free by Jesus. Persevere. Perseverance produces character, and that's what God is asking us as a church body to do through these times is to persevere and continue to walk faithfully in obedience to His Word and what He has called us to be as his people. And so we walk in faithfulness. We walk according to the heart of God and represent him and who he is. We are ambassadors of the kingdom of the Most High. That is what the call of God on each one of our lives is here this morning. And I want to commission you into that, that you walk faithfully in that this week and the weeks to come. As we know the world is in an unrest, yet we have peace in Jesus. We don't focus on the unrest that is all around us, but we focus on Jesus and what he wants to do with us because he gives us peace. And I speak to you this morning, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And in him you will be victorious. And in him you will find all the answers that you need in life. In him is who we are. It is who we are in him as we walk faithfully and are obedient to his word and persevere through difficult times. This is our Jesus. This is the God that we serve. This is who we're called to serve here this morning. In all his glory, he sees your heart this morning. He sees what you're going through and he sees what you're walking through and he loves you and he cares about you he wants to he wants to flourish you in his kingdom there is an abundance of him that is right there that he is asking us to, to enter into there's abundance in him there is no lack in him when we walk in the kingdom of God there will never be lack there will always be an abundance and there will always be an abundance because it's of him that gives and it's in him that we walk in this morning so I bless each one of you this morning I greet you in Jesus name I pray that each one of you have been in the presence of Jesus this week and know the heart of God and know what he has for you. Horror family, welcome. Welcome, welcome. TJ, I haven't seen you in Nakia in a while. Congratulations on your baby. 
um, daughter. Did I get that correct? Praise God. Congratulations. Let's give them a hand, would we? New parents here, Nakia. God bless you so much. Yeah, TJ's pumping his fist. He's enjoying this time of parenting, and God bless you so much. It's so good to see you again, and, and I believe it's Tavian. Is that right, Raya? Tavier? Tavier, Raya's twin brother. <laughs> Although a couple years older, he might need to shave a little bit, but wow. You all know you come from the same family, so bless you, Raya. I'm getting a lot of feedback up here this morning, and I'm not sure what I'm doing. I don't even have a beard to mess things up anymore, so you can't blame it on that. So uh, if you could help me out just a little bit, I feel like I'm in a whirlwind up here sometimes a little bit. Um, thank you. I know there's times there's things that go on that the sound guys can't fix, and I am very gracious with them, and the only time they get recognized if something is wrong. But I want to bless you all this morning. I bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you for being faithful and serving in this capacity. Without you all, we couldn't get this out on media. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, do I need to move something up here, Ryer? Is there anything I can do to help? Or uh, No, just... Just keep, just keep yapping, just keep talking, okay? I will, uh, wow, I will continue to do that. Um, this morning we have a little different, we, we have a little different uh, part of the service. Uh, we had a group that went to Nicaragua last week, and we thank you all for your prayers. What a great time in the Lord that we had. And I will share a little bit more in depth um, later after the group would share. I have a I have a scripture verse. I'm not sure. Can I just come down here, Raya? Would that be helpful or is that not helpful? It's a little help. It's not even helpful for me either. I'm not real sure what I'm doing here. Um, but uh, what, what we've done, the group that has gone, everyone that has gone to Nicaragua is here except for my daughter, Amber. So um, she had uh, prior uh, commitments that she needed to go to. And so she's not here this morning, but you all can hear from her as well of what she went through. But at this time, uh, Pastor Tim and uh, Sister Vanja and Liv, their daughter Liv is here from Kansas City still. This, uh, the family celebrated Christmas yesterday. <laughs> and so they're all together with y'all. What a, what a time, huh? Huh, parents? Huh? Having the whole family together and just, oh, praise God. Amen. So come forward and share whatever God has laid on your heart. Um, <clears throat> and I'm sure Pastor Silver's probably watching some, some miles away. And so we greet him in Jesus' name. <laughs> he's a, he's a, a pastor about, I believe he's like 39 years old that, that uh, pastors the church there. And we connected, we connected really well. And uh, it's just an honor to know you, Pastor Silver, if you are watching. So... Um, I'll turn it over to you all. Uh, well, thank you all for your support and prayers. Uh, Boy, there is always, bad going on. Uh, well, I don't know if it's not always, but yeah, the getting on an airplane is just a little bit, I mean, I mean, I've done it before, but every time I get on, it's like, okay, I'm putting my hands in somebody else's control. I'm not real big, big on that. <laughs> but anyway, we trust the Lord. We <laughs> put our hands on the plane and pray over the plane as we get in the plane. So, and then again, wherever we are, the Lord is with us, right? So we, we are in his care and nothing can uh, harm us or uh, do any damage to us or hurt us in any way unless God says it's okay. So we trust him for that and we made it safely. And we got back uh, in good time for our family get together and we uh, enjoyed some family time yesterday uh, the the trip there uh, it was good to see people that we've seen before uh, good to get, make connections again and uh, just get a deeper relationship with them all which we really appreciate uh, and the people really appreciate us coming and spending time with them and getting to know them at a deeper level they really uh, it's like they're sometimes almost in awe that we take the time and spend the money to go over to see them because I'm pretty sure they know that it takes quite a bit of effort for us to do that. Um, if not, they, it is. It is quite a bit of effort to do that. 
and they uh, they live in conditions that we would not necessarily we'd be pretty challenged to live in the conditions they live in I would I, let me put it that way uh, many of them have dirt floors in their homes um, they do have electricity and they have running water also a lot of them do um, the water is turned off mid-afternoon I think through the night uh, a lot of them have uh, big uh, containers of water that are elevated so they still get some water pressure flow uh, so they can still have water at night um, we stayed in one of the uh, nicer places there they uh, apparently they uh, somebody from if I understand this correctly a gentleman pastor friend of pastor silvers in Miami area uh, put up uh, a bed and breakfast kind of a place there kind of a mission house actually that we all stayed in this year which was our first experience but in the previous years we'd stayed in uh, in the church um, in well the guys stayed in the sanctuary area we put beds out and laid in the sanctuary and had to take them up every time we had a meeting and put them away and the ladies stayed in another room uh, that was actually air conditioned there <laughs> for them <laughs> this year, <laughs> right this year uh, but it was tight quarters <laughs> it was a tight room this year we had kind of separate rooms and I think it was all air conditioned I think all of it was so it was really quite nice for us this year and they feed us well too it's like we have three meals at least three meals a day sometimes we haven't even had a little bit more than that uh, so we had plenty to eat and didn't lose any weight while there, that's for sure. Um, but anyway, the, the people uh, just really appreciate us coming and ministering to them. And it, it's like we are a boost of encouragement for them. that They can make it for another length of time, although they have a really good church atmosphere, good church family. In fact, they've grown, their church family has actually grown uh, since the last time we were there. Um, I don't know if they've doubled or not, but they've gotten a number of people in, which means that they are reaching people and bringing them in. In fact, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the people that we got uh, connected with this year uh, was there's a store owner right around the corner from the church and also Tony's, which is the restaurant that the church owns and runs. Uh, there's a, like a, a store it's kind of a storefront there and that's what people do they just they do different businesses they they make soup and sell their soup or they'll make craft things and sell things right out of their home front uh, and this store owner uh, they live kind of in the back and there's a storefront and they have they have things stored in throughout and uh, but you buy through the storefront essentially anyway the 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 mother of the family i believe has come to the church is that right do you know yeah she's she's been a part of the church for some time for three months oh, oh for three months so his name's don julio her name is karen the owners of the store um they had just recently gotten saved within three months and so they started attending the church right there oh they both got saved the last yes. three months yes. oh which is really cool uh yeah and and he's like he's like on fire and really thrilled and um they have been together for some time in fact they have children that are in their 20s and they have not been married all of this time um so there was some encouragement there for that uh, but the, the daughter, uh, I don't know if it's the oldest daughter or not, but the daughter, Rebecca, was a part of the church, or has been a part of the church for some time, apparently. At least five years. At least five years. Wow. Um, and uh, she made the comment, I did not know this, but last year when I was there, along with the other team, uh, she mentioned that I reminded her of her father uh, at the church, and and 
I don't know if that was just something that she desired that her father be a part of the church, become a Christian, be part of the church. And that finally then happened just three months prior to our being there, which she was thrilled about. Uh, but that was really special for me to hear that, that and making the connections too of people that have kind of known here and there and then making the connections of all these people are related. and Well, not all of them, but this daughter had been a part of the church and now her parents are both a part of the church as well. And so that was really special for me personally uh, to see that take place. And, and then as well, there's uh, another family that we've connected with who is the, he is actually like the worship director of the team of the church. Uh, speaks very little English and I speak very little littler Spanish. <laughs> so we had a tough time communicating and we used Livia to help with that or some of the others that could interpret well. But they really, they look up to us as well, uh, even calling us mom and dad <laughs> to them, uh, which was, it's like, wow, okay. I, at first I didn't quite catch that, what he was saying. It was, I thought he was talking about his dad something, but he was actually referring to me as dad to them as if, as if we're you know, kind of encouraging them and helping them along their journey and it's like wow how can you stop going to encourage that you know so this probably is not going to be our last trip there <laughs> but anyway um Um, hello, I'm Livia. I am their youngest daughter. Um, and this last trip was my fifth trip to Nicaragua, specifically that same place um, near Managua. It's called Ciudad Sandino. Um, yeah, we've gone to the same place, the same church, the same people every time. And I personally love that because we get to continue um, to help see them grow, be with them, encourage them to continue to grow and just discipleship throughout the whole thing. Um, and, you know, there, for me, it's just super important, the two aspects of us going on these trips. Obviously, the spiritual side is super important. If they don't get saved, then what's the point? Yes, we can give them all this food. We can give them this, these clothes and all these things. But it, ultimately, if they don't know the Lord, then they're going to have a not so great eternal life. And, and even now, you know, my life is so much better now that I know the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Um, so that, that part is super important. And, uh, and thankfully we, we saw four people, four, I think it was four, uh, people get saved this trip and we don't know how many seeds were planted, um, during this time as well, which is just amazing. So thank you, Lord. Um, then the other aspect is those practical things that these people need. Um, you know, everything there is so much cheaper for us. So when they hear that, you know, a meal here could be easily be $20 for one person, that's mind-blowing to them. That's, that's, depending on their job, that could be three days of their wages. Um, you know, yeah, because everything's just so much cheaper for them, but all, everything there is expensive to them because they don't have as much. Um, so being able to go alongside of their, with their church and help provide food and clothing and all these things and seeing their church actually do that stuff themselves. So they just started, actually, when we were there, they started an English academy, an English program. Uh, it's supposed to be nine months long, and the idea is teaching them English because that is their best opportunity to then be able to provide for their families. Um, because if you know English there, you can then join a call center, which, is, you know, when we have customer service and it's at random hours or whatever, and we get this person that does not speak English as their first language, sometimes it frustrates us, but actually um, it's those people over there that speak English very well, they just have an accent because they're not from America. Um, and that actually is the best, like one of the best job opportunities there. And, and it's anyone can learn English and then get into those call centers. 
Um, so I love just joining alongside of their church and helping them with evangelism, helping them with the practical needs as well, just joining them because their church is already doing these things. It's not us Americans coming in and just doing all this stuff. It's like their church is already doing these things and just going out and giving food and clothes to different people and doing these English classes and these practical things as well. And we're just joining alongside of them, encouraging their leadership to keep going. Um, Because the last trip, not this one, but the trip before, uh, at the very end of the trip, we found out that there were at least three or four different leaders in that church that were ready to quit and ready to stop doing it. One of them being Pastor Silver, which I don't know if you knew that or not. was being one of the one of the main ones was like this is too much it's too crazy all of these things it's just so overwhelming and they weren't getting the you know the support like spiritual like prayer support stuff that they were needing and all these different things um, but then they said once you guys came and just were encouraging and just praying and all these things and they felt that fire again to keep going and that's that's what we're there for we're there to just encourage them and keep them going and just help alongside of them with with their stuff but. Yeah, it's just super encouraging for us every time the Lord moves in powerful ways and does awesome things in our lives and in their lives. And it's just beautiful to see. So, yeah. Until, what? You want me to change it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. Uh, If Pastor Silver and Raquel are watching. Si Pastor Silver y Pastor Raquel están mirando ahora. (laughs) <laughs> we want to thank you so much. Queremos agradecerles muchísimo. You have served us so well. Nos has servido tanto. And it's because of you that we were able to come and serve your people on your behalf. Es por ustedes que hemos podido entrar y regresar para servir a tu familia y a tu iglesia también. We want you to know and your people, we want you to know Queremos que ustedes sepan that we are going to continue to pray for you and we will be back. <laughs> que vamos a continuar en, en llevarlos en nuestras oraciones y sí, vamos a regresar de nuevo. Gracias. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, amen. Amen. Um, and that's really... Thank you. Um, uh, along with what she shared that we did, uh, there were some guys that stayed back and worked on a project at the church. Um, I will just share my favorite thing of all time is to, uh, when we took food and clothes to, to homes, uh, we did not just drop them off. They were so gracious to invite us in. They were so pleased and happy to see us. And we just uh, asked them questions about their life to build relationship. And to be there as a rep- representative of, yes, the church, but Jesus Christ more. We ended up praying with them, giving them words that God um, that God spoke to us uh, to give them and um, uh, just to be with them in their own setting was such a blessing to them. And they think that we were there to bless them. Oh my goodness. Um, I have to say that only half my heart is here because it's there too, (laughs) you know? And um, this was my third time and it was fun to see growth, like Livia has said. Um, But all of these salvations, all of the prayers over the people and the nations, the healings, all of the building of relationships and the love that broke chains of the language barrier, all these things, what we call miracles, is what Jesus calls business as usual. It's not just a missions trip. We come back and the Lord asks me, well, now what are you going to do? What next? 
See, it's not just on a missions trip. It's 24-7. What am I going to do tomorrow when I go back to work? How am I going to make a difference where I'm at every moment of every day? It's not like, okay, I'm putting a week aside to go on a missions trip. I, I truly believe every person should go on one, just one, just one. It's going to change your life, but every time I go back to the same place, to the same people, serving the same pastor, my life comes back changed every single time just once and this is not this would is a really safe trip to go on is it not and and so i want all these things business as usual the lord's business as usual every day when we take what we have and give it to the Lord. It doesn't matter how old we are. It, it doesn't matter what skill sets we think or we don't think we have. It doesn't matter, oh, I, I don't have enough money. I mean, if God wants you to go, he's going to provide in every one of those ways. When we give what we have to Jesus, our not enough becomes more than enough. <laughs> Thank you for supporting us in prayer. Anything we, we have received as blessings will come up on you too because you prayed for us. So we thank you for that. And um, Nicaragua will always hold a special place in my heart, whether I go or not. Livia's the missionary in, in our family. But we all are on the mission field wherever we are. And I know what she receives in going, I will receive too in staying because I'm the sender. And I will pray her off. So uh, we want to thank you for supporting us. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for sharing that. Tim and Vange, they were the, the catalysts that got us to go. The, the invitation was there for us to go, and so uh, we felt God prompting us to go there, and it was such a wonderful time. But um, Christian, you want to come down? Hon, you want to come up? I'm sorry, Rye, are you going to share? No, 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 it's your family first. I'm sorry, I just, come on down. Don't, you got to get out of your box. <laughs> yeah, come on, Raya. <laughs> it's easy to say when you're on the mission field, get out of your box. How about in your own little church setting here? Praise Jesus. Yeah, let's give him a hand. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. I just want to say I like my little box back there. <laughs> it's uh -huh. nice and easy to hide. Uh -huh. uh, no, I just saw that Pastor Silver just uh, got on watching. So I just want to say thank you for everything, for the Mission House, for um, providing your son for uh, one of the... Um, uh, Yes, thank you, thank you for one of the uh, interpreters and uh, your daughter for for cleaning the house and and helping uh, your wife get the food ready because uh, the food down there is delicious and healthy. Um, yeah, one thing that I want to say is. Last year, when it was my first year, it, it honestly felt like it was a normal day down there. Even though we were on a missions trip, it felt like everybody was going through a normal day. Like, 
oh, I'm going to go to church. These people are here. Let's listen to them. Great, great words. All right, I'm going to go back to doing whatever I've been doing. And then this year, it felt like they were actually open and willing to receive whatever we had. And it just didn't feel like a normal day. Uh, that's, yeah, that's pretty wow. much it. Amen. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, hi. <laughs> hey, Christian. What's up? Uh, so, uh, I'm not going to lie, leading up to this trip, um, I was kind of dreading it, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I don't know, I just didn't want to leave home. Uh, just didn't want to leave you guys, this church. Um, so, but yeah, as the week went on, I met some incredible people, uh, made some new friends, um, and I already can't wait to go back. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was amazing seeing God move in a bunch of different ways. Um, so, you know, we you might think we go over there to change lives, but I believe we come back changed as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you, Pastor Silver, for everything that you've uh, done and gave us. Um, yeah, that's all I have. Yeah, amen. Um, for all that you don't know, that's my son. <laughs> my oldest son. Um, probably one of the more highlights for me after the trip was on the way home he mentioned that God kind of pressed on his heart he <laughs> thinks he needs to start fasting and uh, he did he did for a day and God showed him he prophesied into people's lives God showed him pictures that he just spoke and um, yeah it was just amazing to me to see that work it's uh what greater joy as a parent to see your children walk in the ways of the lord and jeremiah was right there as well he would speak into their lives and he would pray over people and and uh it's like lord bring that here um you know we don't we shouldn't ever despise because of their you what's the word say don't paul instructed timothy not huh don't look down on them because of their youth, but grow them up. But I'm, I'm convinced that young people, if they're trained up in the ways of the Lord, God speaks through them and speaks profoundly through them. And, uh, and, and his word is delivered through the youth. So uh, it was just a blessing for me to see. I mean, it was like, yeah, that's my boy. Them are my boys. Ah! They know how to play baseball. They know how to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Oh! Unverständig. Hun, would she want to come? Jeremiah, you want to share? He said he didn't want to. Jeremiah's a little shy, um, and I want to honor that. So, um, Jay was powerful in the mission field as well. He just feels a little hesitant in getting up before people, and I don't want to crush him before I build him up. Does that make sense? I want to encourage him. Yeah, give him a hand. <laughs> he doesn't even like getting clapped. He's just sitting here. But uh, uh, yeah, he knows. I, I hope that he knows that we, we love him and encourage him. And, and uh, I've, I've noticed that for myself, men, boys like this, uh, will probably be in front of crowds of people at some of, at some stage in their life because of the anointing of God. But I'm going to quit rambling and let my bride go ahead with her trip. <sighs> well, Jeremiah, let me just encourage you. Don't let what he just said scare you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just put that in the back of your mind for right now. <laughs> mm. 
Oh my goodness, as you all were sharing, so many more thoughts came to mind. I'm like, Ugh, I could probably be here for hours going through the entire week and the experiences and all of that. But I was reminded this morning of a quote that I read um, the week prior to going, and it was the power of your yes. There's no power in yes unless there's an option, unless no is an option. Your yes means nothing or your yes is, means very little if no is not an option because you're choosing it. You're saying yes. And first of all, we say yes to the Lord. We say yes to salvation. We say yes to Jesus. We say yes to that surrendering to his lordship. And then we say yes to your will. We say yes to renew my mind, transform my mind. We say yes to being a gatekeeper and allowing the thoughts to come in or rejecting the thoughts that are not of God. We say yes to all of these things Amen. because of the opportunities that God provides for us. And there's no power in that yes if Preach no it. is not an option. Preach it. We can say no. We can say no all we want, and we can refuse the blessings of God. We can refuse the rewards. We can refuse all of those good things that God has for us. Or we can say yes to what he has for us. We can go through the valleys. We can go through the hard times. We can go through the difficulties and allow him to change us from glory to glory. And it'll mean the world. It'll mean the world. It'll mean heaven. Yes. It's the difference between heaven and hell. So we have, a, we have a choice. That's the beautiful thing about God is he doesn't force himself on us. He doesn't say, you have to choose me. What glory is there for God if he says, you have to do this? Mm -hmm. But what greater glory, what, what brings him more pleasure than we say, yes, God. Amen. There's power in that. And Thank there's only Lord. power in that because he gives us that free will. Yes, he gives us that decision to make. And he allows us to make that decision. And he doesn't sit there and say, you bad kid. He'll keep pursuing. He'll keep putting things out there for us to, to bring us to want to say that yes. But he's never going to force it. So there's power. Jeremiah, there's power in saying yes. And your yes to this trip has changed you. You may not see it yet, but it is there. You spoke things straight from the throne room of God. He spoke Amen. through you, Jeremiah, the God of all the ages. The God that we serve here is the same God that we serve in Nicaragua. There's no difference. Amen. There's nothing Thank different you, from what God does here and what he does in Nicaragua. So there's power in your yes, so don't forget that. When you choose to say yes to God, there's so much power in that. Thank you, I wrote so many notes. I... I <laughs> The song we sang this morning, I will rest in your promises. We have so many promises in the word of God. There's so many promises here. And our confidence is in his faithfulness. We can be confident. We can be sure that what he says, he will do. If he has given you a personal promise, you can be confident that it's going to come to pass. It may not be in your time. It may not be in your way. But you can be confident that it's going to come to pass because God is faithful. Amen. So I just want to say, uh, Pastor Silver, Raquel, your church is absolutely amazing. There's such a gift of hospitality there. They welcomed us in like we were celebrities. I mean, they were lined on both sides of the church cheering for us as we walked in that church building. I kid you not. <laughs> right, guys? Like, they were there. Amen. They were cheering for us. Yep. Huge welcome. And it didn't stop there. It was the entire week. They were so grateful to have us there, and they loved on us so well. It was just amazing, and the send-off was just the same. And that prayer at the send-off, Thank you, Lord. I, I kid you not, it made me drop to my knees. The power Thank of the Holy you, Spirit fell, and it was incredible. And Thank their you, prayer, Lord. I have no idea what they said. I don't understand Spanish. <laughs> I don't understand it, but God knew it. The Spirit was there, and that's all that I needed. And it was incredible. Um, and I was, as Tim and Banjo were sharing, and Livia was sharing about um, distributing food and clothes to the, the church people, I had this, I had this picture of one person in my mind that 
The food and the clothing were a great blessing to them. But you know, their faces lit up when we spoke words of encouragement to them. Amen. The food and the clothing, yeah, it was a help. But what they got most was out of the word of God, was from God himself when we were able to speak to them. And I'll never forget, Vanja, we were at a house together. And this woman just looked at her, looked at Vanja like she was just an angel from heaven. Mm-hmm. And she said, I just never thought you would come see me. Mm. I never thought that I would get a word from you. I've seen you pass by my house all these years. But I never thought you would come. I never thought that I would get a word from you. And it spoke so much to her. And, and that's the beauty of God's timing. It comes at just the right time, right? And what a beautiful time that was and a beautiful word. It just, um, it just spoke to me. The material things, you know, they're great. They help us. They help sustain us in life. But if we're not feasting on the word of God, yeah. there's very little fulfillment. Um, probably one of my biggest highlights was uh, when we went to some of the houses. And I didn't know this until after the fact that some of these people received prophetic words or words of encouragement just a year prior. But I kid you not, this one woman, Marto is her name, fierce, fierce prayer warrior. I kid you not. I, oh my goodness. I just get, I still get the holy goosebumps when I think about being in her, in her house. Mm-hmm. She was an incredible prayer warrior. And you could just feel it from the moment you walked in. And this has only been within a year, you guys. It, fe- it felt like she had been serving the Lord for 50 years. I think, I think she was older than that. But in one year, spending time in the Word of God and in His presence, and it changed her and transformed her so much that it felt like a lifetime of spending time with the Lord. Yeah, sorry, I'm in the back. I do just want to say that she was, there was a group or something going on or, or a cleaning of the church that she was, or a meeting that she was a part of, and she heard that we were visiting her church, and she rushed home because she did not want to miss it. Yeah. So it, was, it was just incredible, and there are several stories like this. This one touched my heart because I was physically a part of and, and in her home, and God allowed me to sit at her feet and to just bless her and wash her feet and speak word of encouragement to her because of how she's serving the Lord. And, um, you know, in this battle between good and evil, right and wrong, uh, heaven and hell, I'm so glad that she's on my side and I'm on her side. (laughs) (laughs) Amen. So just a few more things here real quick, and then I... I'll be done. But um, I remember sitting at um, one of the houses, and the, the, the mom, uh, she just broke down. And just, what are your needs? You know, what we're asking. What are your needs? What, how can we pray for you? And her request was just that her household could be saved. Hmm. She had received salvation, and she wanted the rest of her house, household to be saved. And I just thought the faith, faith of a mustard seed, right, can move mountains. This woman had that faith, and so I'm looking forward to next year. If we go or not, I'm looking forward to report that this woman's family has come to know Jesus, and they are a brand new family, and serving the Lord together, because I know it's possible, and I just declare that over her. I don't remember her name, um, but I just declare it over her and her family, and um, just, I'm just excited to see what God's going to do through that. And then um, just real quick, the English Academy was a huge thing for me as well. Um, You know, this church has started this ministry to teach these people the English language, to help them get better paying jobs, to help them to be able to provide for their families, to not be reliant on handouts or not be reliant on anybody else to fulfill um, sustainability for them. But the impact that this English Academy will have, not just on individual lives, not just on families, but it filters out to the church, to the community, to the region. And 
the, even the financial impact that the English Academy can make on Nicaragua as a country. It's just incredible to me to think that this, what might appear to be a small thing for this church, starting out as a ministry, has the potential to impact for the good the entire country of Nicaragua. I, I still am processing, trying to wrap my mind around all that. I don't know if I'll ever get to it, but just, it's just amazing. The things, like when, we, when God calls us to something, guys, we have no idea the impact that we can make. It may seem small and it may seem limited to just our little circle, but I'm telling you what, if God is in it, just watch it explode. Explosion, right? That was the word before we left. Yeah. Explosion. Just watch it explode and see where all the fragments fall because, I mean, there's no limit to God, right? Amen. So uh, I think that's all I have. Um, the send off was just as amazing as the welcome. You presented us with so many gifts and um, just words. And then that prayer at the end was just incredibly powerful for me, too. Amen. And also, just to speak, um, this was our first trip we got to go with Amber. She's been on several. This was the first one with her and with the boys. And, um, yeah, there's no greater joy than to see your kids come to salvation and then to watch them walk it out and to serve the Lord. It's um, just, it's humbling and Amen. joyful and, I don't know, all the feels, I guess. <laughs> Give my bride a hand, would you all? Wow, thank you. Thank you all so much for sharing. I will greet Pastor Silver in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching. I bless you today and where you're at, what you're doing. I pray God's anointing, his courage, his strength into your life. Today, my friend, it was good to meet you. Um, I had a very good connection with this man. He seems to be very competitive. Is that okay? He is very competitive. TJ knows what I'm talking about. When we're competitive, we don't like to lose. And, <laughs> and so when we're both competitive, we connect, and then we uh, don't like to lose, and we go back and forth. But it's in a good way. It's not in a way that causes any kind of division at all. And so uh, one of the highlights for us, we got there on Saturday, and uh, we had a youth service that evening, which was very powerful. They have a youth dancing team that comes forward and dances as unto the Lord. They're modest. That's one thing that I always look for in dancing unto the Lord. They're modest. They're dressed modestly, and they dance as unto the Lord and not provocatively to expose or uh, in a way that is not God-honoring. And so that really blessed, uh, I believe it blessed the heart of the Father. And that's what that's part of their uh, worship team there in the church. Um, and they, they, uh, they, they get loud, they get rowdy, they, get, uh, they, they love to worship. It's just, it's just what it is. And it was uh, encouraging for me to see that as well and to be part of that and uh, always kind of look at the church structure on what's happening and, and connect with the church leaders, um, any country that I go to, just to see where they're at and, and uh, to see what's happening there in their midst. And it was very encouraging to see God moving there in Nicaragua with this leadership team. And one of the things that caught my attention with Pastor Silver was he said six years ago he took, he took on this church and half the church left. Uh, pastoral transitions are never easy. I mean, we go through it. Churches go through it. Um, you're used to the pastor that's been there for years, a new one comes in and he says a few wrong things or whatever and, and people leave or whatever happens. But he went through that. It was actually his father-in-law there, and so it was a close connection. His father-in-law would have left or stepped down. I'm not sure what happened, but then he would have taken over and half the church left, and then, and then after that, another half of them left, and he was down to about 20 people, 15 people. And uh, he was very discouraged. And now it's been, that's been some, it's been like six years ago now, and now he's seeing the fruits of his labor back there in, uh, in the quiet place before him and God, and he was, and, and I felt from his heart he was very discouraged, wanted to give up, and it's real. I, I, I know that feeling from the depth of his heart. I know what it feels like just wanting to give up, just wanting, just like, how can we, how can we continually put one foot in front of the other? when it seemingly nobody cares. 
We put everything. God has called us here. God, did we even hear right? God, is this even you? God, and there's questions that come in. The eternal battle, I believe, that this pastor went through. The eternal battle of doubts and fears and that, that just come and plague you of why you're doing what you're actually doing. Is God calling me? Why is this happening? People are leaving. People are not, not committed. People are this. And, and uh, we just sat and encouraged each other and said, the call of God on our lives isn't dictated by people. Nothing changes. And I encouraged them if there's only one that shows up to your small group, the call doesn't change on your life. The call is still to minister to that one, unless you uh, to minister to that one, even if if there's five hundred there or one, nothing really changes the call on your life. We still minister God. Amen. It's it, it is it, that's what it is, and so that's the that's kind of the internal battle that the leaders of churches that go through, and they had uh, leaders with small groups all around that were, uh, you know, they a little discouraged as well, and I pray that God built them up in a way. I believe we saw, we saw some fire in them, you know, before we left as well, that that, that got rekindled and went, but that's, uh, that was a highlight. And then the, the store owner, Julio, I believe, that just got born again, the man's on fire for God. We stopped in at his store to pray over them. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And uh, she was just there. <laughs> yeah, Van just catching on. She was just there. And was like, well, where's Julio? Where's, oh, he's in the shower. He's, he, he probably won't be out. And we start praying. Next thing we know, here comes this man. He's got a towel wrapped around him, and that's it. <laughs> just a towel wrapped around him. <laughs> and one of those ladies that were with me, we kind of, Afterwards, you're like, yeah, our prayers changed that that towel wouldn't come down. <laughs> you know? But that's how, that's how on fire, I mean, he didn't care. He didn't care. He just wanted the word of the Lord, and he wanted to be prayed over. And he had just gotten born again three months ago. And uh, so we stood there with this man in the towel, and we presented the word of God. And uh, he ministered to us as well. And and uh, so those are some of the distractions at times that kind of come your way occasionally, <laughs> Martha. <laughs> it's your imagination running, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you look at these distractions, yet God works through all those. And, and, the, and it could be, that could be absolutely normal in their culture. Something like that could be just normal, but for us as Americans, we got to have ourselves all put together and everything else before, and that could be normal there, and so it's very, very important to learn and understand the culture of a country before you go and try to minister. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's very important. Sometimes what they do there is not quite uh, what we see would be very fitting in the house of God here, um, so... Uh, <laughs> I, I praise God that, that uh, he was glorified even in that meeting. And, and uh, then from there we went, where did we go, hon? We, uh, I'm not sure. We, we, we were distributing food and, and clothing to everyone. And then uh, Tuesday evening we would have met with the leaders of the church. Had a wonderful time there. Prayed over Pastor Silver and his wife to encourage them. Um, and she would have made a statement there at the end that... Uh, it was kind of, did she say it was a little different or they, people think that, that since they're pastor couples, they don't ever get prayed over or something down that line, but it was really refreshing to them. We had the local, we had the local church that the local leaders that were there gather around them. I believe the word came through Vange, Tim or Ange or someone. I'm not, I think it was you all, but the word was that the locals were going to gather around them and pray for them because they were their pastors. And so that was a little new, I believe, to them as well. So I pray that, that God has built them up in that way. But uh, try to, I'm going to try to wrap all this up here just a little bit. Um, in, in saying all this, you know, we say, well, yeah, we go on mission trips and we, we come back and we're on fire for the Lord and we're changed. Is that, is that true? For the most part, that's true, yeah? Yeah, why, why do you think, why do you think that lives are changed like this when we go on mission trips? Just a question. Somebody, it's not a trick question. I'm not, 
Why, why do we think that lives are changed so dramatically when we go on mission trips? The anointing of God is on us. Amen. Anything else? Hi, Marlon. The expectation of the people. On God to... Okay, there's an expectation that they're going to hear from God through us when we go there. Amen. What else? The word does not return void. Absolutely correct. Thank you. Anything else? Joyce, why are we changed as much as we are when we come? I mean, you even saw my bride. She got up here and just laid the word down a little bit, didn't she? It was like, oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Put a little more fire in that, huh? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're focused on God. Yeah. And the, for myself, as I look, why are we so changed when we go on mission trips? Aren't we intentional? We're very intentional of what God has called us to do because we're on a mission. We're on a mission, and God has given us orders to fulfill that mission. That's why it's called a mission trip because God has given us specific orders to go on this mission, and we either have a choice. My bride did, talked about it. We have a choice to say yes or no. And when we say yes, there's power in that because God has sent us to go on this mission. And so then the question I ask is this. What kind of mission do we have here locally? But my goodness, it's so much easier to pray over a Nicaraguan than it is to go to a local Walmart and say, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Isn't it? Or you go fill up your gas station and you walk in and there's bickering going on and, and everything else and you're in a hurry to get to work because you can't. And when God mentions something, hey, pray over them or ask them if they know Jesus. Have you ever asked a gas attendant if he knows Jesus? Or the cashier at Walmart when you walk through and, and, and she looks unhappy and she looks disgruntled and you say, hey, I have something to offer you that you might not have. It's what God has called us. It's the mission in the end of Matthew chapter 28. He said, and the 11 disciples went away into Galilee. Sound, did you get that? Matthew chapter 28. I should have given that to you some hours ago. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, verse 17, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Yeah. When the eleven disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. Jesus had distinctly told them, he appointed for them to go to this mountain. Okay? He had told them to go there. When they saw him, when they saw Jesus, they worshipped him, but some still doubted. If you have the spirit of doubt on you today, God is not going to move to his full capacity in your life if you are walking in doubt. And I look at this and say, well, that's me. Why do I doubt? When Even when Jesus does a work. But here as we go on, it says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. And amen. And this, if you're sitting here and you're born again and you have given your life to Christ, you have a mission. 
You have a mission even in your local community, folks. God may ask you to go down to the local Harding's grocery store and pray over some people. Are we okay with this? The spiritual answer would be yes. <laughs> do, do you see what I'm saying? Even in our workplace. This is our mission here. We are on a lifetime of a, a lifetime? We are on, <laughs> Arlene, help me out here. What am I trying to say? <laughs> You're not sure either, are you? We, <laughs> our lives are considered to be a mission trip. Could I just put it that way? That everywhere that we go, we are to take Christ. We are to take the love of Jesus we are to take the hope and the peace of God with us and go it really it really stirred me up and hit me as thinking like Lord I know you used these mission trips to change lives you've used mission trips to to change my life and and the question and and the more that you go on and the more times you come back home and you're like ugh but we just said the same God is in Nicaragua as he is here in America, and we serve the same God there as we serve him there. Why can't I be so intentional about the mission that God has given me here in my local community as I am them five days in Nicaragua? Is it because nobody else knows me? Nakia, yeah, maybe, possibly. We can actually prophesy to them people and be totally off the rocker or off the rails and leave the country and they might never see us again. <laughs> but you do that here in the community, the next time they see you, you'll be held accountable. And I look at this whole accountability thing as we walk with Christ. And that's why it is so important that we understand and know the word of God because we are all on a mission, whether we get in an airplane and fly over the little pond or the big pond and land over in some foreign uh, third world country, we're all on a mission. And the question that God has, has stamped into my spirit for us here at the Griner Church Body this morning is, what are you doing with your mission here locally? Has God instructed you to do some things that you're not being obedient to? Has God given you distinct direction to go minister to in the community to draw people's hearts to God and it's a little uncomfortable and you just think that I'm not really suited up for that well I want to encourage you this morning that you are because God has called you he has commissioned you into this he said go you therefore into all the nations baptizing them we even had a baptism didn't we Van Hun? we had a baptism didn't we yeah it was a local it was it was actually the leader of our group it was like huh yeah it was the leader of our group. He's felt like God had spoken into his spirit. He's saying that God is asking him to go deeper with him. It's a deeper depth with him. And he felt God ask him to be baptized. So we just immersed him right there in the cold pool. Shaking, you know, it was cold. He didn't care. He knew he was God. It was obedient to God. And I'm looking forward to seeing what God has for his life. He's seeking God at a new level, even here in the church that he's attending to there in the vine. He's going into, he's going into other aspects of ministry there as well it's just exciting to see what God did in his life there and got a hold of him and and uh and I'm excited for what he, what God has for him but what I want to do what, what I want you all to leave from here this morning is this to be encouraged that you have a mission right here and it could be right in your own family it could be your next door neighbor or it could be the person you sit beside in a pew every Sunday. Because we don't change places very often, remember? <laughs> you know, I thought about that. I keep harping on you all, but we sit here in the same church every Sunday after Sunday, don't we? And we might have to change over here next Sunday and sit here and look all pretty. Uh, but yes, God is calling all of us. He has called all of us to spread the good news, to spread the gospel. He has commissioned you and, and he has given you his spirit. He's empowered you. <laughs> and I'm just going to challenge each one of us. See this week. 
We kind of do this in our men's Saturday morning study. We challenge each other, but I'm going to put this out for you all. This week, see if there you can make a difference in one person's life by just sharing your testimony. Can we do that? Barb, you're looking at me like, uh... Yeah, you can do that, can't you? Amen. By just sharing your testimony, sharing what God has done. That's what testimony means. God does things in our lives, not for us to keep it, but so that we can share it with other people so they can be encouraged. That's the mission. That's, that's the mission for you as well as me this week. And I will report next Sunday. If I don't report next Sunday, just get right up in my grill and say, hey, what's going on here? Hold me accountable. Would you do that? But if I miss it, be nice to me. I mean, say it graciously, okay? We love each other, right? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, thank you all so much, um, the Hars, for coming out of your Christmas weekend together. Thank you. It might have been a stretch for you all to be here, but I believe that... Uh, God was blessed first and foremost in the congregation as well. So um, let's, let's all stand, if we would, please. Is there anything that anybody wants to share? I want to give that opportunity first. Anything? Ray, come on. That was quick. Praise 